A lot has changed in the AI coding world. And a big question I'm getting is, am I still using Claude Code? The answer is yes, it is still the best AI coding tool in my experience, even with all of the new things that have come out. It's only been about two months since my last update video, but enough has changed where I wanted to make a quick update video to show you guys some of the cool stuff that I picked up since the last one. If you're new here, welcome to the video. My name is Chris and I build productivity apps. Today, we're gonna to be going over updates and workflow improvements since my last one. My workflow has generally stayed the same since the last video. And if you haven't seen it yet, definitely check that one out. But there are some really cool things that I picked up that are making me even more productive that I wanted to share with you guys. I'll start with a really quick, easy one. It's using the word ultra think in your prompts, specifically for very hard tasks. So when you tell Cloud Code to do a task and you just say, please ultra think at the end of it, it'll actually think longer and harder about the problem. I have noticed that when I use this, I do actually get better results. And I usually reserve it for tasks that I think it's not gonna get, or it's already failed at one or two times. It's such a simple trick. And when I first heard about this, I actually didn't believe it was true, but then I double checked and Anthropic does have this in the documentation. So it is actually a thing. So if you're stuck on something complex, just try it out and maybe it'll be able to solve it. Now, this is a big one I don't see a lot of people using, and it's background tasks. At the time of recording, this is actually a very recent thing Claude Code added, and it's the ability to run background tasks for you. And here's why this is a big deal, at least for me. Let's say you're running a backend server. You can now tell Claude Code, hey, can you run the server in the background for me? and it's gonna go ahead and do that. And now Cloud Code has live access to your server logs, which is really helpful if you're debugging a problem, for example. Here's an example of what I was doing before this feature existed. So let's say I was running the LE backend server. I would typically run the server in a separate terminal. Anytime there were errors or logs I wanted to share with Cloud Code, I would have to copy and paste them into Cloud Code. And then I would have to repeat this process a few times as I'm debugging. But now I can just tell Cloud Code, can you run the server in the background? And you'll see this little indicator at the bottom that says one bash running, which means means Claude Code is running the server in the background for you and it has access to all the logs that are coming in. So if I'm asking it, hey, there's a problem with the server, it's actually just gonna go ahead and check the logs itself. No more copy and pasting. This might seem small, but I'm usually copy and pasting errors like a hundred times a day. So this is actually a pretty big deal for me. Honestly, kind of surprised that not a lot of people are using this, but if you're working with any kind of server back under front end, this is a pretty big time saver. The next thing that I've been doing is using Claude Code as a research assistant, especially for planning complex features. Let's say that I need to implement a feature with PDF extraction. Instead of spending an hour researching and trying to find the best way to do this, I can just ask Claude Code, do a web search and find the current best methods for PDF OCR extraction and create a detailed plan for me in a markdown file. So it's actually going to do the research for me, compare different approaches and show me a detailed plan. And it's not just Googling, it's synthesizing the information from multiple sources and it's giving me actionable recommendations. And here's another tip. I'm also using Claude Desktop to do this research. A lot of people are sleeping on Claude and don't know this, but if you have a Claude Code subscription, you also have access to Claude Desktop with research mode too. When you ask it a question or research a technical topic, it will scan hundreds of sources, sometimes taking up to 20 minutes, but it does incredibly thorough technical research. So sometimes instead of doing it in Claude Code directly, I'll even use Claude Desktop Deep Research. And then I paste the findings directly into Claude Code to go implement. And this combination is just incredibly powerful for tackling complex problems. If you're interested in mastering Claude Desktop for your own project, then definitely check out this Claude AI guide that HubSpot put together. Personally, I'm using Claude Code over ChatGPT, and I'm surprised a lot of people aren't using it yet. It covers things like Claude projects, which I'm constantly using, especially for things like writing YouTube scripts. And it covers artifacts, which is really helpful when doing technical documentation. If you're building apps like me, you can use the artifacts feature to generate readme files, API documentation, or even architectural diagrams. My favorite section is the one titled Projects Your AI Powered Task Assistant. It gives you a great breakdown of the projects feature inside of Claude, which I'm so surprised I don't see a lot of people using. And I'm personally using it for all of my YouTube and Instagram scripts. So definitely check out HubSpot's guide, link in the description. And a huge shout out to HubSpot for sponsoring this portion of the video. Let's talk about MCPs. In my previous video, I was not using MCP servers. To be honest, I didn't really understand how they worked, but since then, I have started using them. I won't try to explain it here, but the simplified version is MCP is a way for you to give Claude Code access to tools. Okay, so why is that important? It's because there are a lot of tools or these MCP servers that are actually super useful. So I'll give you some examples of the ones that I'm currently using. The one I'm using for all projects is called Context7 MCP. It's a free MCP service that gives Claude Code access to a ton of updated documentation. 
let's say I'm working with Superbase, for example, instead of having to go to Superbase, copy the documentation URL and pasting it into Claude code, instead, what I can do is just tell it, make sure you're using the latest Superbase documentation, and it's gonna automatically use the Context7 MCP server in this case. And now it has access to the latest API documentation. The other big thing I'm using MCPs for are database MCPs. For example, with the Superbase MCP, Claude code can actually read my database and make modifications to it. So if a user reports a bug, I can just ask Claude code, hey, can you go use Superbase MCP to get the latest data from user 1234? And it's gonna go pull the data for that user account for debugging. Here's a real example. Ellie user was saying that their tasks were not correctly rolling over to the next day. So I literally asked Claude code, this specific user is reporting that there's a bug with the task rollover feature. Can you help me debug it? And it connected to my database, found the relevant data from the user, identified that there was a corrupted time zone saved to the database, and then created a fix for it. Before MCP, I would have to go write a SQL command or go manually dig through my database and try to get that user's information, which I would paste into Cloud Code anyway. But now Cloud Code can go do that all on its own. And it's not just Superbase. I'm also using the Firebase MCP, the Convex MCP. There's even one for AWS. Basically, every major service and data provider has some sort of MCP. I could do this manually, but using MCP with Claude code make this 10 times faster. So this next one is perfect for solo developers and it's using Claude code to review pull requests for you through its GitHub action feature. Every time you commit, Claude is going to review your code for bugs, security issues, and best practices. And as a solo developer without a team to review my code, this is actually huge. So setting it up is super simple. You literally just type this command and Claude code sets up the entire GitHub action for you. I will be honest though, about 50% of the comments are kind of just fluff and not relevant, but it has caught a lot of stuff that is worth adding. Like here it noticed that there was actually a place where I was potentially exposing an API key if it was accidentally logged. And then here it identified another place that I should take a look at because there might be some memory leaks going on. This is the kind of thing that could save you from hours of debugging in the future or worse, some sort of security breach. At least at the time of recording, it does come with your Cloud Code subscription anyway, so there's really no reason not to use it. If you're a beginner just getting started with this stuff, this is also a really good sanity check just to make sure that you're handling at least the basics. Next one is one that I haven't directly mentioned, but a lot of people have noticed, and it's that I dictate everything into Claude code. I literally cannot remember the last time I physically typed something into Claude code. I thought everyone was doing this, so I didn't know if it was worth mentioning, but clearly this was new to a lot of people. And I'm actually using something called Whisperflow, and a huge shout out to them for being a channel sponsor. And the reason I recommend doing dictation, especially with this tool, is because you get way more detailed prompts. It's just more natural to communicate with Claude code by speaking. When you're explaining a bug to someone, would you rather type something out? or just talk to them. Talking is just so much more natural and you end up giving way more context on the problem. And why I chose Whisperflow specifically is because it actually understands developer terminology really well. So when I say something like MongoDB or Superbase, it gets it right every time. Plus, if you're using Cursor or Windsurf instead of Cloud Code, you can actually tag files just by dictating. So you can say, can we make a change to at sidebar.tsx? And it'll tag that file correctly. Last thing I'll mention, which is really cool, is Whisperflow has this snippet feature that they recently added. So you can actually save snippets that you frequently type. For example, sometimes I like to run Claude code where it auto accepts everything, which to be honest, I don't recommend people doing, but I do it in certain low risk cases. So I have the snippet where if I say, run Claude dangerously, it populates it with the real command for me directly in the terminal. And I'm actually primarily using this outside of coding too. So whenever I'm sharing my calendar link or work email, I have snippets set up for these two. I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check out Whisperflow. So the next one is that Claude Code has the ability to set up custom agents. All you have to do is type in the slash agents command, and then you have the option to define what your agent does. I'll also be honest here, I haven't been using this one as much as I thought I would, but I have one specific agent that I made that's really useful. So it's an iOS specific agent, and I basically gave it instructions, always use the latest Swift syntax, make sure to use Context7 to get the latest Apple documentation, to keep in mind what iOS version the project targets, and to follow specific iOS design patterns. So when I'm doing specific specific iOS tasks that I'm pretty sure Claude Code is going to get tripped on or use the wrong version of Swift, I can tell it, hey, make sure to use the iOS subagent for this. And now it's actually going to go ahead and execute this task with that subagent. So this is really helpful when I'm dealing with Swift UI animations or complex UI kit integrations where the regular Claude code might not have that specific iOS context. But aside from this, I have not really found the subagents that useful. I think they're a little bit overhyped to be honest, but this is a really cool one. People have also made a security review agent, but a little bit before recording this video, Claude actually released a specific slash command for the security review. So that use case isn't as relevant anymore to be honest. 
The last thing I'll mention is a small fun quality of life improvement, and it's the ability to add custom status lines. And what this means is you can actually customize what appears below Claude Code's input box. I'm personally keeping it pretty practical, so I have the current Git branch and the time since my last commit. I'm using Git as my checkpoint system, and so seeing this information at a glance is super helpful. So when Claude is about to make big changes, I can quickly see, I haven't committed in two hours, let me go save my progress first. Some people get creative with this. I've seen people add mini dashboards, system stats, and even little Tamagotchi ASCII art. But for me, the branch and the commit time is perfect. The way you set this up is you just type slash status line, and then you tell Claude code what you want in plain English. So I would say slash status line, current git branch, and then time of last commit. So that that's my two month update with Claude Code. These features, especially the background tasks, the MCP tools and the voice dictation have really leveled up my productivity. This stuff and Claude Code are evolving so fast. So I'm pretty sure in a few months, I'll probably have another update video with whatever features they come out with next. If you're on the fence about trying Claude Code, it is still the best AI coding tool on the market, at least at the time of recording the video. If you have any other workflow tips, please comment below. I'm always on the lookout for new ones. And if you found this video helpful, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously, if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.